with Tanya Angus, who once looked like this, but who is now six foot six and weighs 480 pounds, and she is still growing. But first, NBC's Michael Oku has her touching story. By the age of seven, Tanya Angus was a daring diver. By 14, a long, lean high school ballerina and everyone's best friend. Old home videos, dusty pictures that reveal who Tanya was, but not what she's become. I get the impression everything hurts. Yes, every day, everything. Every At 30, Tanya is six foot six, 480 pounds. Today, I'm still growing. Everything is growing. Everything. My back, my head, my feet, my hands, my face. Tanya suffers from something called acromegaly, a chronic growth dysfunction that afflicts only Grind two to three out of a million people per year. It's like I'm somebody else. I, I look in the mirror, I don't see me. It was a decade ago when Tanya, then an energetic 20-year-old interested in an acting career, began to notice that nothing fit. Then one morning, couldn't fit into any of her clothes at all. I kind of got scared when I, when I couldn't fit into my shoes anymore. In a few short days, her voice deepened, her face expanded. Doctors discovered a benign but inoperable brain tumor lodged in her pituitary gland and secreting excessive amounts of growth hormone, a life-threatening condition if left alone. If an acromegaly patient is appropriately managed by a specialist today, that patient can enjoy a relatively normal life. Acromegaly can usually be treated, but so far nothing's worked to slow Tanya's condition. They said that I am the only person that they cannot control my growth with medicine. She gets out in a van modified to accommodate her, mostly to call on one of five doctors she visits a month. Well, let's put these back for you and see. But the condition largely confines her indoors. Stand up. I don't want to see myself in the mirror. I... I'm sorry. It's okay. <laughs> Trapped in her own home and in her own body. For today, Michael Oku, NBC News, Las Vegas. Tanya Angus is with us along with her mother, Karen Stradinsky. Bob Knudsen is an acromegaly patient as well and the founder of the nonprofit Pituitary Network Association. Good morning to all of you. Good morning. Tanya, if I could start with you. Obviously, watching the piece, I can see how difficult this is for you to talk about. Why did you want to share your story? Um, to help others realize that there is this disease and it can happen to anyone um, if you catch it early, um, you don't have to look like me. So you, you came down with this disease uh, 10 years ago. You were diagnosed, you were 20 years old. Did it take time for the doctors to figure out what was wrong with you? What did they say to you at first? At first they, they were like, oh, you know, you're in here for back pain and headaches. You're, you're just trying to get drugs from us. So they didn't believe you? No. No, they just thought I wanted pain medicine to get high off of. So how long did it take them to, to properly diagnose the illness? Um, well, I, it started, I started growing at about 17 and I was diagnosed at age 22. So five years yeah. of living with this, and you're saying had it been diagnosed earlier, maybe they could have done more exactly. than they have at this point. Karen, Tanya, growing up, did you ever notice anything that would have suggested that there was something wrong? She was perfectly normal, and as with pediatricians, they always do the weight and the height, right. and everything was normal. She was a perfectly normal teenager, dancing, and her friends, and everything was fine. So when you did start to see that her hands were getting larger, uh, her voice was deepening, her feet were getting larger, you must have been terribly frightened as she a She was in another state for two and a half years, and when she came back home, we were in total shock because a family friend um, who was a pediatrician, Dr. Kahita, she 
saw Tanya before we got back in town. We were out of town. Her little sister, Susan, had picked her up at the airport and said, oh my gosh, Tanya, something's wrong. Something's really wrong, yeah. Bob, you say that one out of every five people in this in the world really suffers from some sort of pituitary gland disease or pituitary tumor correct um, are doctors uh, notorious uh, in terms of not being able to diagnose it properly or is Tanya the rare case no she is only rare because her tumor is so aggressive but she is not uh, rare or unusual at all uh, even in acromegaly uh, the figure you have, I'm, I'm sorry to contradict you, is a little bit wrong. It is far more than one in three, uh, uh, pardon me, uh, three in a million. Probably closer to 18 or 20 per million have it. But more and more and more they're diagnosed early. Therefore, they fortunately don't have to struggle with it the way Tanya has. Yeah, well, do doctors are saying to Tanya that there's nothing they can do in her particular case, but is there hope on the horizon? Absolutely. There's already, there's work going on. I know, I've already discussed her case with doctors over the weekend. Um, and we know there's hope out there. There may already be answers out there, but that I don't know. It's, it's too soon. I just got involved on Friday, so I, I don't know. But for somebody at home, what are the first signs that, that you should look for? Uh, well, I, I have to generalize, and I'm going to make it quick. For a woman, first thing she looks for is her menstrual cycle, whether or not it's regular, irregular, and whether or not she's lactating milk. That's about the first thing you look for, okay, even in, in a, a young man? girl. And in a man, it's erectile dysfunction, uh, mood swings, depression, uh, anger. Um, there are both pituitary tumors of all times first hit you psychologically and then sexually. Boy, but you, you have to really find the right doctor because those kinds of um, characters that you're talking about, symptoms, could be a lot of things. Tanya, I want to turn to you for one second now and ask you the, the hardest thing about dealing with this on a day-to-day -day basis. <sighs> um, I, I think being in so much pain um, all over my body, I mean, my, I have nurses that come to my house uh, on a weekly basis and they ask how bad do you hurt today and I'm like a nine and I mean I'm always I can't stand longer than 20 seconds and at 30 years old I never I never dreamt that my life would be like this. Now you look at the pictures of you as a 20 year old and the difference yeah. you know, is, is, is very, very striking. I mean, you've also had suffered two strokes as a result of this, and you and you have constant kidney stones. Yeah. What, what are doctors saying to you about um, prognosis? What um, do they say? Well, one doctor told me I had a couple months to live. That was back in September, and uh, it freaked me out a lot. And then I went to another doctor, and I told him that, and he's like. I don't see a date stamped on the bottom of your foot. Mm. And I I started to think ab about it that way, you know. Yeah. And he goes, although you do need a, or, you know, a orthopedic bed to raise your legs yeah. um, when you sleep at night. And well, I know maybe through some of Bob's help and getting you connected to the, the doctors, maybe there'll be something promising on the horizon for you. And you also have a loving family, your yeah. mom Karen, and you mentioned your sister. You wanted to give her a shout out, so go yeah, ahead. I wanted to tell her happy birthday. You know, um, mom and me, she's just turned 28 years old, and her name's Susie. Well, so we'll all wish her a happy birthday, and we wish you the very best, Tanya. Thank, thank you for sharing you. your story, Karen. Thank you so much. Thank Bob, you. also, Bob Newton, thank You're you. Welcome.